I'm thinking about what is the purpose of it is the first thing. The execution of it. The aesthetics and quality go hand in hand. Australia, what's your favourite sport? Football. Snack. Ice. Animal. Kangaroo. And what's your favourite car, Australia? Holden. Let me see, that's football, meat pies, kangaroos and Holden cars, huh? Right. Well, you sure sound like Australia to me. We are. Well, then you better tell me again, because I just might forget. We love football, meat pies, kangaroos and Holden cars. Football, meat pies, kangaroos and Holden cars. My background to starting in the auto industry goes back from when I was a child, um, when I was very interested in architecture and uh, drawing. We had a, a friend from, you know, who lived in the US who used to send us the um, Saturday Evening Post and there was these beautiful illustrations of cars which sort of captured my imagination. I started drawing cars and making models. I ended up doing one year of engineering. I could see that wasn't my um, forte, but I had been accepted to RMIT into industrial design, which was a whole new area. No one knew much about it or understood what you could do with it. What drew me to it was the cars. While I was doing my course at RMIT, there was a competition the British Carriage and Automotive Association ran which I was fortunate to win a section of. While all this was going on, I'd also been making overtures to the car companies that are in Australia. No other car performs like it, because Holden is the only Jim car Jim Holden people were always very encouraging and giving me materials, and I kept on saying to them, well, you know, I don't need to finish this course, can I, when can I start? The guys that uh, ran the place encouraged me to go back, so when I graduated, Joe Shemansky, in uh, late 64, he offered me a position, but initially I wasn't sure whether I wanted to work in the car industry. Then I realised my real calling was the car industry. When I started there, uh, I said to Joe, well, what am I going to do? And he said, there's this new studio here, there's nothing in it, there's just one desk. You go in there and just draw a car. And for about three or four months, I drew sketch cars and I walked around saw what everyone else was doing. I thought it was wonderful. And later they sent me to the headquarters in Detroit as a trainee to develop my capabilities. There always had been some design capability from back in the middle 1930s in Australia. Because Holden is the only car designed and built for Australia. But they wanted it to be on an international level and they had a vision, and so did I at that time. Wild, young and wonderful. Being one of the first graduates from RMIT to come there, it was a great opportunity to be there. We were just young kids, we didn't have much actual practical experience, but we had a broader product and design experience than the, the people that were there, but they had hands-on experience. So the combination of the two eras coming together created a great future for me, and then eventually I started to get involved in some of the new HK design coupe work. One opportunity I had was to design a new rear cover for the HK Monaro GTS. Australia's first sports machine. And that wheel cover was the first fully pressed steel wheel cover made in Australia. Monaro. Monaro. 
Life is suddenly very Monaro. It's quite a complicated pressing. It was made out of a number of pieces. Monaro. Wheel covers have never been designed like that in this country before. Go Monaro this year, but you'll have to expect to be envied. They've become iconic, especially with younger generations. Monaro. Monaro. Life is suddenly very Monaro. At that time, because I was quite young and didn't have any family commitments, I was able to spend till 9.30 at night, several times a week, working there. Part of it was paid and a lot was on my own time, actually to improve my skills of being able to communicate my ideas in a very creative, free way through the various rendering techniques, which were sketching and full-size technical tape illustrations over mechanical configurations. All the materials were imported. You couldn't buy those sort of materials within Australia. They weren't available, and it was very, very little to do with what evolved throughout my career later on, which was more to do with the architecture of the car and the engineering of it, which you learnt seeing the impact of what you were creating in form, especially for body work, as to what could and couldn't be made. It, it did set up a whole wave of different thinking that we had to be specifically tailored to Australia. With the small budgets we had, we wanted to offer sporty type cars, powerful cars, the local people could purchase. Up until then, and most of that sort of product was imported and very limited. People could aspire to them, but could never afford to actually buy them. You can afford one. We're back to unfortunately that situation again. It was an exciting time because everybody was involved. It helped develop a variety of different manufacturing um, capabilities within the country. It has to have a very Australian We were also fortunate that another wave of young Americans were brought out here. It was a chap by the name of John Chanella. He was a stickler for a relationship of line and form as well as the function of the car, and I learned a lot from him. We finished off the HK. We started working on the HQ a series of cars. The Kingswood! <laughs> the new generation home. Make it yours. I was promoted to the head of Holden Drama Studio, which was just being established. So, break away. This year is the year, this year. You can break away, choose a four, choose a six. Right now, why not break away? Duran is a really groovy. Have one in your life. And it's the rally winner, right? When you're hot, you're hot. GTRX was to be uh, Australia's Corvette and it was done in the early 70s. The purpose of it was to use Holden componentry from the Tirana. We were asked to come up with sketches and the models. I was fortunate to have my theme selected and three of them were built for its time. It was quite a milestone. I, I got in a, um, once or twice to drive it up and down in the experimental garage. It felt like this was you know, the greatest, greatest thing ever. And it's quite an exciting car. It could have been a great opportunity as an export product. Their attitude, our own you know, government attitude, which it was kind of naive and we missed a great opportunity. What is this Tirana? It's a rally We car. worked on the LH Tirana and LX Tirana. Those cars were innovative Australian, totally Australian car, built from components from the larger HQ and HZ type Holden cars. Joe Shemansky was the director at the time, said we could do a hatchback from this car. It's a big back door and a fold down floor with a boot 
And that was the first hatchback manufactured in Australia. It's just a boot and tails, it's a boot and all, but the ladies think it's cute, it's the next best thing. But the, man who but the thing that the really set that car apart was its racing history. It's the winningest car in the country. Yeah, it's V8. Peter Brock. I used to go to Harry First workshop where Brock would be, help them with the aesthetics of the car, the various spoilers, the paint schemes, and that was encouraged by the whole management. You might have got a free ticket to the car races now and then, but other than that, it, there was no pay, it was just love of the car. The chequered flag unfolds a page in history as Peter Rock and the Marlboro Holden dealer team comes across to take the chequered flag. It's a good fun time, but also we were of the right age. And in 1978, I was sent to Germany with my young family and I led the advanced design studio at Opel. But I also picked up at Opel the German management of people, which was much different than the US management of people. Not only the execution of their design, but also how did you get there? Some people would think it was a little bit stifling that they were overmanaged. After I came back in 1980, I was appointed as the first Australian Train Director of Design for Holden. In 1983, uh, Holdens were in a bit of trouble and General Motors sent out the message that we had to restructure the company, that either you turn the business around and make it profitable or the place would be wound up within about 18 months. General Motors Holdens had made a $100 million loss. Then all the American management left Australia. The local Australian people went on to evolve a new series of cars. I tried to impart a lot of the fortunate education that I'd had from the chief designers I had, especially Leo Pruner, who were absolutely fastidious about the execution of the design. I was able to put together my training in the US, my European Opal experience in Germany, and my Australian culture. The VN Commodore was to be the next generation of Holdens for the Australian requirements, which was to take a family to be able to drive into state with the passengers having a degree of comfort and being able to take the appropriate amount of luggage they'd like to carry in Australia and also use the rugged Australian uh, mechanical components that were available and as much Australian input into that design. And we did that by talking with the um, union people who were making the car and explained to them what the difficulties were and everyone came on board before that. Designers weren't to be bothered with too much about the engineers. They were almost your enemy. And it was a carryover from being in a big corporation. It wasn't necessarily the way Australians would do project. Aesthetically, it worked well. And architecturally it was a, a, a good execution and as a result of that the car went on to um, win the car of the year award and also it became number one in sales that's just one of many reasons it's australia's top selling car holden commodore there really is a world of difference beautiful it's like a new car that's pretty good A long time ago, <laughs> that I would have sat in one of these. But it's good. It's got some nice things about it. This was Holden's first serious attempt to have a contemporary looking car with aerodynamics. It was very simple, but very functional. Outside the car is a sculptural one form. 
and the interior was to complement that, so it was all homogeneous design intent. You can see it's easy to get in, and there's lots of space here for teenage boys and girls. The volume in there is absolutely fantastic. This car had a certain degree of sheerness to it, had softer shapes, and it was more of a total design. The aesthetics there was just have this one surface. The idea was to get the glass out into one plane with the body surface and the roof, so it all looked like it was just one form. Everything you see here was made here. The second lot of windows down, that was the design group. We were on the move. The VN was a turning point for Holden and we did it our own way and we became an example to General Motors. Now, for the first time, there's an Australian car with contemporary European styling. When the VT was done, they were very interested in us and asked us to do proposals for them. And that got us recognition that we weren't just a little place and the colonies doing funny things. We really could do world class design and manufacture. Not only did it turn the company around to proceed into the 2000s and the VE, the VF program, we were as good as anybody anywhere. It's just unfortunate that going forward we won't be able to do that in our own backyard. <laughs>